everyone and welcome to my cedar chest refurbished video part one so i actually found this chest in my neighborhood somebody was throwing it away which makes a lot of sense because it's actually in really bad condition a little bit about this chest it's a klein brothers full cedar chest the klein brothers were in business between 1910 and 1930 and then in 1930 they closed their doors and moved to Florida and never made furniture again. So I based on the hinges and some of the hardware that is in the chest, I believe that this is closer to 1930s, which makes it still vintage because you have to be 100 plus to be antique. Uh, but it is getting up there. You'll see a little bit on the inside of the trunk, but more on the outside, it's got a lot of damage. And a lot of the metal parts, including the tag, are intact, but there's a big wood chunks out of it that we're going to need to fix. And as I close this lid, you'll see I actually have three corners that look like they were chewed off by a dog. Um, so we're going to have to use Bondo for those, which will be a good intro to Bondo later in this video. But because we're going to have to use Bondo on this, it also means that I can't leave it full wood and we're going to have to paint. So we'll have to get creative with this. But the beginning stages are going to be cleaning and sanding. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to be dismantling. I went ahead and sped this up so you guys don't have to watch the whole thing. But... Typically with dismantling, you want to take apart the whole thing and it might be taking the drawers out and numbering them or taking a tabletop up off the legs. But for this piece, I'm actually not going to dismantle the whole thing. I'm going to take out this front lock part as well as the copper plate that's on the front face of the chest. And I'm also going to take out the lock part at, uh, that is on top of the lid. I'm not going to be removing the hinges or the bar joints that hold up the lid. Reason being is after researching it, those hinges um, are actually plated copper and they're really easy to destroy, um, especially being this old. It's going to be really delicate and it's also going to be difficult to re-put them in once I'm done with the piece. It will be difficult to put those screws back in the holes. So I'm going to do as little dismantling as I can possibly get away with for this piece. So after dismantle, we're going to go ahead and clean. And the first thing I want to do is try to remove as much of these stickers as I can. I am going to be sanding this down quite a bit and probably will also be scraping with my carbide scraper. So I'm not horribly worried about getting all this off, but... I definitely want to get as much off as I can now prior to cleaning so I have less cleaning to do later. The cleaner I'm going to be using is Laz Totally Awesome Cleaner. It's a yellow cleaner that you can find actually at Dollar Tree. It used to be a dollar, but I think it's $1.25 now. Um, and then I just bought a generic spray bottle to go with it. Um, and just put the nozzle on top. Uh, quite frankly, I'm all about efficiency and what costs the least and works the best. So uh, definitely like using this cleaner and I use it on just about anything, but everybody has their own. Some people use TSPs, some people use a green clean solution. It really matters uh, on the preference of the flipper. And uh, if I can get something for $1.25 that's going to last me for months, I'm going to do it. I know you, you can't smell through through the camera this chest smelled horrible i'm not sure what was in it previous to me getting it but it smelled really really bad and it's also smelled like old cedar which didn't smell too bad but just the funk that was inside of this chest really overpowered it so i went ahead and sprayed it all down and i let it sit uh, it dried really quickly because it was pretty humid and hot out, but uh, after wiping it down, you can see my rag just getting dirtier and dirtier. It's been pretty gross.
So this next step is going to be repair and we are going to be using Bondo all-purpose putty with a hardener. So you can get this can at your local hardware store and the difference between like a wood filler and Bondo is think of Bondo as like wood filler on steroids. Wood filler is great for small cracks and crevices but if you need something heavy duty like to restructure a leg you redo a veneer surface on a table, or in this case, restructure an entire corner, Bondo's what your go-to. This is the hardener that you'll find under the lid of the Bondo. And then you will need a tool to open the Bondo. Clearly I forgot mine. But a note before we open the Bondo, always make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. You will want to wear a mask, potentially even a respirator. I used to do this in my basement and I would turn off the heat or the AC depending on the season and wear a respirator in my basement um, because this stuff smells bad and it's quite caustic. You'll also want to do this on a surface that you do not care about and wear gloves because you don't want to get this on your hands. You'll also need a mixing tool, something to open the Bondo, and something to spread the Bondo. Typically I use a putty knife. Now that we have all our tools, we're going to go ahead and get started on the Bondo. When I open this can, you'll see that the Bondo has actually separated, which is totally fine. That's why we've got our mixing utensil and we're going to go ahead, going to go ahead and stir it up. You will need to read the back of your Bondo to see how much of the gray Bondo to hardening agent you will need. And we've got a lot to redo. We've got three corners, we have multiple gouges and a chewed off side. So we're gonna have to use a lot of Bondo, but I am going to put a word of caution here. Bondo dries within three to five minutes once you add the hardening agent. So if you have a lot to Bondo like I do in this video, use small amounts and then just keep remaking small portions. I underestimated the heat and the humidity this day and how quickly my Bondo was going to dry. So you'd see me taking out a lot of Bondo out of that jar and adding the hardening agent to it. And I left this in the video because I want to show you guys what not to do and show you that everybody makes some mistakes, even people that have, have a couple years under their belt. So I'm going to go ahead and put the hardening agent in and this, this is where I mess up. Um, as I go ahead and start uh, bondoing these corners, you're going to see, <laughs> you're going to see the bondo start gunking up. I mean, very, very quickly. It'll start getting chunky. Um, the bondo consistency you're looking for is the same consistency, maybe just a tiny bit thicker as when it comes out of the jar. You're looking for like a silky smooth type consistency because that's how it's going to dry. It's going to dry smooth. If you let it out too long and it gets chunky, that's how it's going to dry is chunky. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start doing these corners and you'll see my mistake. Um, the proper way to use Bondo, because <laughs> I actually had to throw it away and redo it, is to take small portions out and put a small amount of hardener in and then come back and make another small portion when you're done and put another little bit of hardener in it and just keep redoing this until you're completely done. So always take into account the heat and the humidity of the day and uh, don't waste Bondo. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part and I will chime back in once, uh, once things start going downhill. Okay, so you will see right here, it has started going chunky. <laughs> it is unworkable at this point. I try to work through it, um, and uh, it is pretty far gone. Um, so let's talk about consequences of me trying to work through it here. So one, 
it was really hard to sand. It also had air pockets in it because of the chunks. And I had to do Bondo on it another two times on this corner in order to get it to where I need to be. So um, please don't do what I do. I left it in there because mistakes happen to everybody. And I think that it's a good learning tool to be able to show mistakes as well as the right way to do things. So after I make up my second batch of much smaller batch of Bondo, I went ahead and redid these other two corners and another gouge that I found. Uh, and then we should be good. Now Bondo typically, it says it's sandable within 15 minutes. Again, due to the temperature and the humidity in your area on that day, that time may vary. I typically like to leave it for at least an hour before I sand just to make sure that every single layer of that Bondo is dry. Once it's dried for an hour and made sure all the layers are dry, I'm going to come back and sand this down and we're going to start sanding the cedar chest. So stay tuned for part two, which is where we'll go ahead. We'll be sanding with both sanders and with a carbide scraper, and we will talk about some sanding tips. And I hope that uh, this video helped you, and I'll see you in part two. As always, thank you so much for watching.